That's funny. Hello, everyone, and welcome here to the AMA uh, Track Racer Truck Series and the Rogue Energy 250 here at Daytona. And as you can see, I'm a ghost for your intro. And I'm long with me here tonight, back from the grips of strep throat and the, and the horrors of that that we see every week. It's going to be Mr. Matt, the pterodactyl. You got me. Got you loud and clear there, Big Bird. Welcome to the World Center of Racing here in the state of Florida. Daytona Beach, the place. Tonight in primetime, the trucks. They're going to duel it out at the Big D. Who do you got in victory lane, my friend, at the end of this thing? Man, we've had three different winners here tonight. Uh, this week, or two different winners this week. I think we're going to have three. We saw Kendall Paul get his first one last night. I'm going to call it this evening. It's going to be the lightning. Liam Anderson. Victory Lane here tonight for his first win. I love it. Got to go big or go home here at Daytona. And I all know all of these drivers are primed, ready to get things kicked off here this evening. We got to do a little bit of qualifying action first before we go live here tonight. Right. Want to thank everyone for joining us right here on Extreme Sim TV. All righty. That being said, we're getting ready to rock and roll. And again, we got a little bit of time left in practice. What is your thoughts, man, as we get ready for qualifying? <laughs> okay, let's try it again. What's your thoughts as we get ready for qualifying here tonight? Well, qualifying here is it's so aero-sensitive, right? The yep. weather, all these different factors come into play. So looking at right now, current conditions out there on the racetrack, it's overcast, a balmy 77 degrees, track temp mirroring that ambient air temp, and that wind's going to be a big factor out of the southeast at 10 miles an hour. These trucks are going to be making all the horsepower. That track is cool. They're going to have all the grip. Who can time that wind gust right, though, out of the southeast gusting to 15? That wind could be the make or break who winds up on the pole here this evening. Uh, hey, it's the night time. It's the right time. Let's get these trucks on the racetrack, and let's see who can send the fastest flyer around this place. But I do think that wind is going to be the difference maker. All righty, what do you say we get my ugly mug off here and get ready to go qualifying and get these trucks locked in or go home here tonight? Man, you got one shot at it to put this truck in, and you're going to have to try it here tonight, and here we go. You know what's beautiful, folks? I understand that Daytona, they're under rain delay right now. There's no racing action to be had. But here at the virtual Daytona Speedway, it's nice and dry, and we're getting ready to qualify these trucks in. So if you're just coming over from a truck race to join us, thank you for coming over. And we hope to give you some entertainment while we wait on the real race to get back going again. But here we go, qualifying for the Rogue Energy 250 here tonight. It is time. Go or go home here. Let's find out. Man, we got, we got a bunch of trucks out here tonight. Matt, how nervous would you be in this scenario? Trying to get this truck qualified in. Make sure you're in good standing and get rocking and rolling with this. Well, that's just it. You got to be in it to win it. And the only way to do that is you have to make the field here tonight. You don't want to be on the outside looking in. So if I was a team that had to make it in on time, you're darn right I'm nervous right now. I'm talking to the crew chief. I'm talking to the spotters. Any last information that they can feed me that'll help me pick up a tenth or two out there on the racetrack... My ears are going to be open and uh, trying to get all that information before I go out there and make that hot lap and just, you know, cross your fingers that you hold that wheel as steady as possible right. and you have enough to get in. Well, that's the thing, right? You only got one shot at it, getting that truck in. Man, breaking off of that for a moment, Winstead and Paul, both with the wins this week, both huge wins for both drivers. Paul last night, such an emotional win. You think we're going to see the same thing in Iron, another big emotional go? Absolutely. It's Daytona. This is what it's all about. And uh, you're, you're darn right. I think we're going to have another uh, highly electrified victory lane when this is all said and done. Yes, sir. I think so. You say J Jamie McKinney on track right now. And look at all the rookies in the field here tonight. We got R, R, R. What, a third of this field rookies tonight? At least? Yes. 
at least from what I'm seeing. I thought maybe that was a graphical error, but that is not the case. As we have a lot of young guns, perhaps, looking to showcase their talents out there tonight. It was Zane Bailey with the fastest lap of the race. So it's no surprise to see Bailey top of qualifying here tonight. Good job for Jen, Jen, uh, Mr. Zane to Bailey, now Claus Williams. But you know what's interesting? I think we're going to take, what, 30? There's 36 trucks, I believe, starting here tonight. Keith, Kyle, right there, Jordan Parker. And already we're starting to see it get interesting around that cut line. Right now, Kevin Fry on that cut bubble. Yeah, Kevin Fry is on the cut bubble, and he is in the sizzler, hoping, do, praying anything he can possibly do to keep that truck there right on the bubble. But it's still early. He could easily be knocked out by any one of these up-and-coming drivers that are putting down a hot lap as we speak. Harley Day back with us. He qualified in last night in a big move to get that truck in. Harley Day did an amazing job in that 64 here tonight. All right, Harley Day going to work his way. Let's see what Harley can do. Can it be two nights in a row that Day pulls it off here tonight to get his truck in as we get ready? And Harley Day crosses the stripe. Oh, nope, that was his up to speed lap not going to matter so we got a battle right here brian sharp one of the veterans in trouble right now back to 37 jordan parker 41st matt there's so much it's changing so rapidly here tonight unreal well that's exactly what happens when you you know you go back to an old school format from about 10 15 years ago when you have not everyone that shows up makes the race and you mentioned the veterans uh, Brian Sharp, uh, you know that's a well-known driver i'm shocked to see him that far back here in the qualifying order as he's now kicked down to p39 but that's just the beast of daytona everything has to be flawless when you're out there putting a the lap down or else you could be you know it potentially in jeopardy just how you know that 125 machine is right now all right, we got an update. It's going to be 38 going in. And keep in mind, Brian Sharp on the outside looking in. No. But if, here's the thing, we do have lock-ins, remember, from last year. Now, I'm, I'm not going to look through the risk. That's, um, Kendall's got to sort that out if Brian's going to get in. We'll see if that changes. Jordan Parker right now in good spot. But right now, the first truck out, Nico Mains. He raced with us last year. That's going to be tricky if he gets in. But Paul yeah, you know, Nico's going to be looking to knock on the back door, getting in this field. You're absolutely right. All right, checkered flank out on qualifying here tonight. All right, race control, they're going to work all that out. And while they do, Matt, we got something special for these drivers here. We're going to bring somebody in to give the command to start engines, and we'll be right back with you for that in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. There we go. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Where's the fireworks? We need the fireworks to fly over the whole nine yards. All right, ready to go here. So now we got to let them sort that out. And they are doing that right now over there, Matt, on that side of things. So I'm going to hold the starting line up until we get an absolute affirmative of who's in. That's the hard part about this, dude, right? You do all this work, and you might not even make the show. Well, that's just it, and uh, the race control is more like the war room right now as they are scrambling eight minutes and 45 seconds on the clock to figure out who's in and who's not. Yeah. Was... But how about that bull sitter, Matt? Well, we got time. Yeah, wow. That was one heck of a lap. You know, I got, I, got, I, got, I got so interested in that battle for the cutoff, I didn't even notice Kirby come through and throw down a wicked lap. A 52.212. That is screaming. All right, well, in, a, in a pickup truck around this place. We know one person that will start tonight, right? And that's Stephen Kirby because he's on the pole, so he ain't got nothing to worry about. Man, great for him. Great job. And I'm trying to see. If he's available to us, there he is. We're going to move him up in the waiting room. 
and give him just a second, and then we'll move him down here and talk to him. But like you said, an absolute screaming, screaming lap for Kirby here tonight. Oh. Yeah, and I mean, go ahead. If we got uh, Kirby in the booth with us now, Matt. Yes, sir. Steve and Kirby, Matt, and the, Matt, and Matt in the booth. Get a copy. Got you guys. Well, you don't have to worry about the whole qualifying in, being at the tail of the field, all that nonsense, because you, sir, are going to lead them to green from the pole. I know, man. It's uh, been a good two days. I started outside front row last night in the Xfinity Series and finally got pole here. So we'll see how it goes and uh, see how well everyone man uh, minds their manners and figure out where we're going from there. There you go. This is going to be very interesting as we get ready to go man i don't know this is going to be very interesting and uh man what do you do to keep that truck safe well if you can stay uh uh on the front row inside to me i think is uh probably the safest place to be uh but if people start pushing it three wide man it's uh it's hard to do so uh i don't know i, I tend to like the inside i got seem like i got more exit spots there all righty, man. Well, we're going to let you go, buddy, and best of luck to you, bud. Thanks, guys. All right, there we go. We're going to move him back to left turn. And what we're going to do now, guys, we're going to go commercial break. When we come back, we'll be ready to go here at turn night. So don't go anywhere <coughs> here this evening. We are back here as we'll do a little bit more interviews as they continue to try to sort through this field here tonight before we go racing here in the trunk series here tonight. So again, thank you everyone for coming out. And let's uh, grab some more interviews, shall we? As we got the pterodactyl getting back in the booth here, he run down to grab us a coffee and a, a hot dog here. Now we're going to see if we can talk to some more folks here as we get ready to go. This is going to be very interesting as they get everybody ready. What? It, what let's go with uh, Robert S. King here. Let's talk to Rob as we continue to get these trucks ready. And there we go. Robert S. King, Matt in the booth, got a copy. I got you loud and clear, boss man. How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. Well, right now we're all kind of held up here getting everything sorted to get this one going. What is your thoughts here 
as we have this little bit of quote unquote rain delay before we get going. Honestly, I, I I'm a bit concerned. Um, my team owner did not make the race tonight. Um, it, it comes down to Daytona being Daytona, and you know you're gonna hope to get where you need to go. Um, I am starting farther back in the pack than I wish I was, but uh, I know me and Tanner are gonna hold tight for Parker Motorsports tonight and uh, hope for a good race. Um. I will say this. I want to thank a couple people if that's all right. Go ahead, buddy. Well, I'd like to thank Parker, uh, Jordan Parker, for the opportunity to race for his team for this season for the Trucks and the Cup Series. Uh, I want to thank my main sponsors, which is W Energy and 213 Simware, alongside Waste Management, even though they don't technically know I'm using their logo. <laughs> right, there it is. Um, yeah, yeah. I I'll be honest. My father used to work for him, so I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to throw a scheme together with Waste Management on the car. Um, honestly, I'm just happy to be here tonight and be able to actually he sit here and, you know, race where I need to race and hope for the best. You got 100 laps. Stay telling her. You never know what's going to happen. All right, buddy. We're going to let you go because you are officially rolling here. Good to luck to you, Mr. King, here as we get ready to go. Appreciate it. All right. There we go. So we're going to get him back to where he needs to go. Boss man, you back in here, buddy? Uh, be advised, you have not moved me yet. And for letting it moving in, let's try to get here. Jordan Parker. Okay. Let's see. There we go. All right, we got him finally. All right, Matt, that was a little kerfuffle, but we're ready to go. So to explain to everybody how that worked out, Jordan Parker originally had qualified his way in, but unfortunately due to the walk-in rule of the full-time guys from last season, he did not make it. They are double file. We are ready to go. And it's the AMA truck, Track Racer Truck Series live in Daytona rolling. Everybody headed for turn one right now. Steven and Zane Bailey on the front row right now. Row number one and headed down into turn one as we speak at the moment. Great to see these trucks finally up to speed. Steven up front leading the field. Zane Bailey there to the outside. A rookie going to lead there with Jeffrey Clifton as well. So you've got a very quick race here tonight. 20 laps for this first stage. You're going to have to be on it for this first stage here tonight. You cannot make a, ma a mistake here early in this race. You don't have the opportunity in the Rogue Energy 250 because if you do, you are going to get clobbered. Matt, what's your thoughts here as we uh, get this one underway? As you mentioned, you don't want to get clobbered. And I think the best place to do that, like we heard in the interview, is right where ba Bailey and Kirby are right now, right up there on the front row is the rookie is poised to make a statement as Zane Kirby in the 21 car, or truck, excuse me, now out carrying the torch here for the first time at Daytona. There we go, working through. <laughs> Again, two by two at the moment. No surprise. And what's your thought of there being a little bit of, if you will, uh, especially in the chat here, a little bit of uh, about you know the lock-in that's just the way it goes man unfortunately guys i hate to say it but you know it is what it is youtube chat got it got a little heated there for a moment Steven you know that's the thing with rules as race car drivers you know you're not always going to agree with every rule but they're there for a reason and those former past champions or you know competitors that have been here from seasons past you know you know, that means something to the series and the competition as well. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, there's always next week, but I can understand some of the fans being upset. But, uh, you know, sometimes the rules go your way. Some way, you know, sometimes they don't. But I'll tell you what, the 21 is getting a massive push. And just as I say that, there comes the 15 up to the double zero and gives him a shot out to the front. Yes, sir. And that's the way we sat here two by two. And folks, lap number four, and remember, stage points lap 20 tonight. Again, quick race here tonight. Stage points lap 20, man, and it'll be here before you know it. 
And when you're turning uh, low 48 second lap times out there, it'll be the quick, fast, and in a hurry. Is Kirby sets new quick time on the board with a 48 25. That top side line, Matt, is not given up. That 70 machine up there, uh, Jeff Clifton, you know he's bad fast, but the rookie Kirby continues to lead the outside train. He thought about dropping down, right. he hesitated. Oh, that is so, so dicey, man. Yeah, when you're, when you're leading up here at any of these lines and you want to make, you know, a lane change, you can't hesitate. Oftentimes, that leads to the big one. Kirby made a better decision of it and sticks up top with the 70 at Clifton as they do battle with Bailey. And I believe that's Austin Hunt down the bottom. Yeah, and you're going to see that all night long, right? You're going to see people back and forth, back and forth. What can you do as they work their way through here tonight? And again, so much fun to be had here this evening. And two by two with Kirby. And Whoa. Whoa, easy does it. Did it, got, it got dicey there for a moment. Yeah, Kirby had death wobble, and he did a great job collecting that race truck back up and keeping it in one piece. But just as you were saying, Matt, that's all it takes right there. Just a little bump gone wrong, and mayhem strikes the entire field, especially when it kicks off right at the point. Yeah, and that, and that can really get you if you're not careful. It really can get you in a hurry, right? Oh, man, these guys are going to be all over the place here tonight. I have a feeling as we're still side by side. The 21, the double zero there as well. And again, it'll be six to 100 complete. Working now lap six in the history books as the 15 of Hunt is still glued to the back door of that double zero of Kurt Stephen Kirby, who now pulls alongside Zane Bailey in the 21. It's going to be a John Ford special coming out of the three and four complex. Who's it going to be at the line this time? Is what? there still side by side at the Geico restart zone? What what do, you, what do you do here when you're side by side stacked up like this? How can you handle that? Well, it's early right now. You know, I just let it ride. You know, later on in right. the race, you can pull down, you can side draft. You can try to stack the line up so you get that springboard action, the accordion effect, the surge out in front. Yeah, you're going to have to springboard your way through, I think, if you want to get forward here tonight. That is for sure. And right now, everybody continuing to work their way by. And great racing here so far. Or you can go Talladega Night style and dial up some shake and bake action. That always gets you to the front as well. So it's Bailey up front. Clifton there as well as I had to tune in my mic a little bit there. It was acting up. Sorry about that, guys. But right now it should be good. Kirby Keith. What about Claus Williams right there in the 04? Claus Williams, the silent assassin, knows how to get around these plate tracks. He's being methodical. He's being patient. But I look for him to try and rebound here tonight. You know he was one of the favorites in the 500. Let's see if things are a little different here tonight as Klaus Williams sits in that ninth place position just inside the top ten. Yeah, and that's all you can do, right? Try to figure it out right now as they're working their way by. Great job as they fight by eight of winner complete. Yeah, right now we're seeing great boys and patience out there on the racetrack. You know, I was worried with all of these rookies in the field, they'll be trying to go out there, you know, and set the world on fire. And that's the last thing you want to do when you have 100 laps here at the World Center of Racing at Daytona. Rookies really showing a lot of experience and a lot of patience out there, and that's what it needs to get done. Oh, as that bottom lane really gets stacked up. Look for a big run to the double zero here at Kirby. Oh, stack them up like dominoes. The 21, Zane Keith right there, Jeffrey Clifton right there as well. Here comes Mark Murphy joining the charge. Great to see Mark Murphy moving forward here. Oh, what just about got turned around out of the outside line there. Yeah, he just got razzle-flazzled and shit-azzled, but he, again, great save out there on the racetrack. All right, there we go. Ten laps complete. 
guys. Let me know if the audio is better for you or not. If not, I'll try to fix it again. Kirby out front. The 15 of Austin right there behind him. Here comes the movement behind them yesterday. Jeffrey, Dakota Rams, or Dakota Zane, Paul Witt, Mark Murphy, George Racon back there. And really all right here in a big pack. And that's that's good and bad, right? Great racing. But if something were to go wrong, it's probably going to be huge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can literally pitch a tent over the top 10, top 15. You know, when they're packed that close together, you know, at, you know, 190 plus miles an hour, if one car is going to get out of shape, you're going to be in it before you can even react to it. So you're absolutely right. It can be a long day for a lot of these drivers should something kick off at the front of this piece. It is now the 21 of Bailey hooks up with the 70 at Clifton. They come down a little bit. First side drafting we've seen tonight. And again, it's a big time drag race down the back is the 70 has a lot of help from the 21. And here comes the 15 and the double zero of Kirby right back once again. Kirby trying to come back. Look at Kirby. Nice run for Kirby right now. Oh, no. Oh. Yellow, yellow. No. Oh, no, 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 I, no, no, oh, no, I, no. I can't even. I can't even. I am sick to my stomach. Oh, that's everybody. What? I, the broadcaster's curse, Matt, is a real thing. Well, 12 laps in, and we have got ourselves a parking lot. Are you kidding I me? I can't. I, I can't. I, I don't even know what to say right now. I, I, I'm lost for words right now. I can't. I can't believe what we just witnessed here. It, it is was literally. It was going go ahead. so good, and then it did. Let's take a look. Oh. <laughs> this took a howitzer. Just a. Right. The seventy just got in the left rear, and there you, or the right rear, and that was it. And look at that was it, man. Like, nothing you could do. That, watching that replay doesn't help either. Oh, man. Every. Oh. The 90, oh, yeah. the 21. David Dunwoody gets through it. Good for David. He made it. He probably needs a change of uh, underwear here because. Holy moly. The whole field probably needs a couple tear offs for their race suit. And uh, multiple Code Brown Moment of the Night awards right there as well. Yeah, we're on board right now with David Dunwoody as he heads toward this incident. And I have a feeling it's going to get really busy for him really quick. And that's something I noticed. He immediately got down on the apron and started letting that car roll, heads through the grass, takes a big shortcut, and just drives his way through. And you just drive through, and there's a melee of trucks everywhere. I mean, it looked like a nuclear bomb went off when that wreck kicked off. There was just trucks flying everywhere, going into the outside retaining wall, flipping up in the air. Look at this. Kendall Paul sneaking by. Paul does a good job. Good job by Paul there. Paul did a great job getting skinny out there on the racing track or the racing surface. Great heads up. Unreal. Unreal. Well, first yellow of the night, folks, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll be back for the restart.
And welcome back. And like everyone else, I couldn't wait to get back from commercial break either. It's Matt and Matt in the booth here tonight. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Daytona as the big one strikes early at the front of the field. One of the most poised rookies tonight taken out as it literally kicked off from the front row. And Matt, I can't get over this. Just moments after we were talking about the one thing you don't want to do, and that is light the torch at the front of this piece right. and have a cataclysmic event that affects the entire field. And that's virtually what happened. It, I, precisely. And man, when you start looking at lap down trucks now, Robert S. King, one lap down on Pit Road and Waste Management Truck. Hinton on Pit Road. So right now, as I'm seeing it, there was at least 10 or 12 trucks involved in that. What was a melee over there? All because of a right rear, right? Just a bump going wrong, and as soon as that happens, it's KD bar the doors, track blocked, trying to sneak through it. Yeah, that's typically when you have a sky ground, sky ground, sky ground situation. And sky ground being the driver, you know, as the truck flip, flips over and over and over again. It's just so unfortunate for all these drivers that put so much time, work, and preparation, you know, into tonight. You know, but that is the reality. Anytime you step foot onto one of these uh, super speedways in this configuration, you know, this tight racing, which is a byproduct of, you know, the horsepower, the restrictor plates, one wrong move, and that was nothing of intent up at the front. Like you said, it was just a bump gone wrong. But sometimes that's all it takes is that iRacing.com pace truck's going to pull back off and give Austin Hahn the button here in the Geico restart zone. He's going to stand on it, punch it through the floorboards, back underway again. Is this a drag race side by side? Heath now comes up the challenge on the outside line, Matt, and he's going to have help from Klaus Williams, who is now up five spots from where he started. Yeah, there you go. So Klaus Williams and more up there. And again, a five lap dash till the end here. So here we go again, right? You start the process, you know it's gonna be about 20 to go here. Or excuse me, a lap 20 is going to be the stage. Another 20 to another stage. So you really don't have time to wait here. Three wide. Oh boy. Oh, oh no. Oh, what a move! Oh, oh man. Oh, oh. Are you kidding me? How did he, how? Somebody better told Dunwoody there was a wreck just moments ago, but the way he threaded the needle there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. These guys uh, these guys aren't playing. No. It, hey, we said it's Daytona, the stakes are high. I guess they don't care if they end up in a hot dumpster fire in the infield. They are going for it. Is now the is that the Keith on the outside? Is now he gets help. But he was trying to be the Lone Ranger using the side draft. And now, just as we say that, you have six, seven, eight, nine trucks on the outside lane. Yeah, and, and you see that that top lane starting to fall together. You know, it'll be the end of lap 20 that we will see the stage caution. So it's in the lap 21, technically going, uh, technically going to lap 21 here. And up front, Austin right there side by side with Dub Woody. Those two tight with one another. Man, I'm Very tight with one another. I'm impressed, man. Look at the battle up front as they continue to go at it. Well, that's just that's the beauty of stage racing, right? Every time we close a stage out, that equates to points. And you can see the intensity picking up right where it left off on the racetrack. Is Dunwoody up 35 positions from where he started? Not 13, not 25, 35 spots in less than 20 laps that is extremely impressive the dunwoody now leads think about that did everything possible now to the lead goes david dunwoody are you kidding me right now we've had a lot of those moments we've only 20 laps into this thing man well, now he's gonna get past but you know for a moment he was your lead it's still the point i mean he just proved that obviously he knows how to navigate these restrictor plate super speedway 
uh, this configuration, this setup, he's very comfortable with it. Oh, we're doing the crazy train. They're doing the Indy Snake up front. As Heath now continues to carry the torch here at Daytona, has a lot of help there from the 74, but they might get put in the sucker oh. hole. Is the 55 trying to split the outside? That's going to stack well, him up. Look at Dunwoody on the bottom again. Where did Dunwoody come from? Got that car on the bottom, three wide. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold no, on, no. no, good job. Oh, oh, oh. That, was, that was nearly calamity again. Are we going to make it to the end of the stage before calamity ensues? Well, you can see those guys probably just figured out, hey, we got to settle this back down again. Yeah, I would imagine so. David Dunwoody right there. A great run right now. Austin there as well. Hey, what? Dunwoody done dusted the field up. <laughs> I mean, this man's at the point. He started in the in the next county over at the drop of the green flag and here he is potentially could win stage number one I, this is absolutely what a drive right and i got a question for you sir has he got moonshine in that truck or something because he is driving like the wall men are after him that's what you want though right oh, yeah I mean, exactly and just like that, look at this. We're at the end of the stage. Here we go. Movement down the back. Done Here we go. We're starting to Whoa, what a crossover. Wow. Did you see that? Left or right to left. Done with on the bottom. This is absolutely fantastic up front. Is there side draft and change and lane shaking hands, dancing at almost 200 miles an hour as they fire off turns three. And Coming Adam down the O'Brien up top. And O'Brien does it. O'Brien gets it. Oh, uh, Adam O'Brien, uh, David Dunwoody second. Wow. Adam O'Brien, the rookie, is absolutely electric there with a last minute pass coming to the line. Is Adam O'Brien in the 74 machine? Please, the lap that counted there, Matt, and that was the lap that closed the stage out. Colton e Easter Day, Brandon Adam O'Brien, Pat Brennan, Josh Joshua King, Kyle Heath, Austin Hund, the 81 of Jordan Strode. Knight belongs to Ted Craven, and rounding out the top 10, Tanner Sidden, up 20 spots from where he started. So we have a lot of big movers inside the top 10 right now. We see David Dunwoody down there, man, and we talked about David and his movements all night. What do you say we get ready to talk to David? What do you think? That's, yeah, we need to talk to this guy. We'll move him down here to the broadcast or to the waiting room here. Give him about 30 seconds, and then we will talk to him. And again, what a night so far. I don't even know what to say after the end of stage one here. <laughs> All right, David Dunwoody, Matt Booth, you got a copy. What's going on, Matt? Holy moly, feller. What what were you trying to do and prove? You went left, right, up, down. Where didn't you go? I was trying to win the stage, man. Well, you got just about got her. All right, we got a three-car one, two, three right there. I'm not, I'm not mad. Oh. All right, Pterodactyl, you got anything for him? Because I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Done, Woody. That was some kind of drive through the field, my man. You started off in the woods, the drop of the green flag, and you oh, come yeah. flying up through the field. What was that like, just the way you clawed your way through the field? No holds bars. It seemed like, in your mind, it was the last lap, but clearly track position is key. And, man, that was a lot. That was exciting watching you get up on the wheel and getting it done. Well, when the, when the guys said they were going with me, I, I said, I got a hole. It's in the middle. They shouldn't have left it open for me. So I just went right up the middle and got to the front and made a, moved to the bottom and looked back, and my teammates were behind me. There you go, man. He used the, uh, he used the black hole to his advantage right up the gut. <laughs> that was extremely impressive. What a drive there by Dunwoody. Well, I, I tell you what, Dunwoody, I'm proud of you, bud. Good job. We'll let you go. And I uh, look forward to seeing you putting on a show in stage two. 
Here, we're going to do it again for the end of stage two. All righty, man. There you go, David Dunwoody, Black Magic Graphics. I think he was working with some Black Magic there that like, that time there, Mr. Pterodactyl. There could be something to it, Matt. I don't know if everything's going to up and up there with Black Magic, you know, using that magic. Because he, he, he got away with some moves that scared me. I'm, well, trying, hey, I'm trying I mean, to break him here because I know he's still here listening. I was trying to get him to hey, laugh, but he did a great job. Hey, you can use all the magic razzle-dazzle you want. As long as that truck passes inspection, there's no illegal modifications to it. If you got some hierarchy, higher power out there that's going to help you perform on the racetrack, so be it. Because Dunwoody has got the vibe right now. That is for certain, as he was electric. But, Matt, let me pause for a minute and just go back to what we saw there about at the halfway mark here of stage one and that was the big one being set off from the front row i think these drivers need to be mindful that while it's fun it's exciting and it's great for the audience at home i mean this type of racing action i love it you love it and we appreciate everyone on extreme tv that's sitting here right now that's loving it and vibing right here with us but if you do that again, that could potentially have huge ramifications on a lot of these drivers. So is it balanced tonight? Do you, do you try to be patient right. and then go for it late? Or do you just say, nope, it's Daytona. I'm going full send right now. Uh, yeah, I think you just you go full send like dirt, uh, Drafty Beef and Chat said. You know, there are stages you're going to go. And before we talk more about this race, oh, I am watching Chat, guys. And I do very much appreciate your comments. Both me and Matt do. I appreciate it. Thank you. And as far as that crack one, I will look into it. I think it might be an XLR line issue that's creeping up every now and then. That will be solved tomorrow because luckily we got a music store right down the road from me. So I'll go grab a new XLR line. I had this XLR line laying around for a while there. Uh, and I think that might have been the, uh, the El Problemo. So Matt, XLR cables love to do that. Yeah, they do. Every now and then, they just want to be be a problem here as we get ready to go. And, uh, man, we're ready to go back at it once again. That's right. Field racked and stacked once again. We have another rookie at the front of this piece now. Dakota Rams. I'm going to butcher that last name. Is it, I believe it's Ramsier or Ramsier. In that Ram 96 Beer, I do machine. Believe. We're going to go with Ram yep. Zier. And if I, I'll, I'll, I'll own it if we mess up here. <laughs> yeah, Ram Zier, Ram is tailgate here. Push him to the front. Pace truck pulls off. Geico restart zone. He's going to have the button once again. Green flag back in the air. Back alive come all these roaring V8s into the nighttime. It's 38 trucks take go back. To the green flag action here at Daytona once again. The 96 has a great restart. Mark Murphy in the 69 machine. He is leading the high side lane right now with that 19 machine of Joshua King in tow. But that bottom lane looks to get poised up once again here. Nice work down the back straightaway two by two. The field thunders cross Whoa. over. Hello. Knock, knock. I'm home. Mark Murphy. Did you... Man, these guys are getting it. Mark Murphy just about got murfed. <laughs> he just He's about playing got, both. He just, oh. he just about got Call of Duty Warzone. Now the 19 well, King going to take over. That's Joshua King there. I know him from a couple other series. I know it says rookie out there. He may be a rookie to this series. He's no rookie in competition, though. Is now the 16th of Easter Day. All over the 13 of Heath. He has given him a shove to the front on the high side coming back now. And like we said before, Matt, you're going to have coming and going. Comers and goers all raised along. And another big time lane change there. That's the Silverado. Coming down to the front, taking it to the bottom, eating hard on the inside. Going to get clear. Oh, almost clear the 13. Is there side by side now coming into the 3-4 complex? That's Esther Day up there going at it with Kyle Heath. Rookie versus veteran out here tonight. That's the 13 up top. Hi Heath fighting on the top side, doing a wonderful job. He is up on the high side, rocking the nosebleeds. 
where Grandma hides the cookies, getting all that momentum up there, and he is making it work right now. But the bottom, they are fearless as well down there. And, I mean, we're really not seeing a clear advantage right now. I mean, just as soon as one line seems to kind of edge the other out, they come right back, and here they go right on the bottom now, right on cue, as we get ready to fire back off into the corner. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's like... Uh... Like I said a few nights ago, I'm, I'm going to pull an 80s toy re reference out again. It's like a slinky, man. You pull that thing apart, and what does it do? It just bounces right back together. Man, a 13. <laughs> King win the lead right now, and I broke him. Good job, me. Kyle Heath leads yesterday there as well. We're going to have to send a slinky to the winner of this race now. Yes, we are. He leads right at the moment. Uh, right at the moment. Kyle, look at yesterday trying to move back forward. But Amanda, are you surprised after the big incident we got that many trucks left competitively? Because it almost feels like it looked worse than what it turned out to be. Well, and sometimes that's just the way it happens. You know, real time it happens so fast. Even the replay. You know, you're just focusing on the carnage, what just happened out there. But sometimes, you know, you get a couple of opportunities to go down pit road or at the stage there. You pound some of that sheet metal out. But, yeah, there's a lot more trucks that are actually running very competitive right now than I thought we had initially when that incident happened out there on the racetrack. As Heath continues to assert himself at the front of the field. But Easter Day wanted it yesterday. He is there right now challenging once again. Now challenging and fighting their way through. Now what do you do? Man, what a battle all the way through. Double file all the way back as this war of uh, truckers continues here tonight. Yeah, they got it. <laughs> they are trucking right now, that is for certain. Last time by top speed out there on the racetrack, 197 miles an hour. And that freight train on the high side is cooking. Heath holding it down strong once again. Still getting a lot of help there from Easter Day in that 60 machine as well. Tell you what, Matt, Easter Day does not want to ride. There's another rookie that wants to go up front and show everyone that he is here. He is for real as he's getting another bumper full from the 19 of Hunt. Yeah, big, big bumper full right now up front. We've got, some would say, a convoy at the front of this field with the 13 and the 15 and the 60 right there as well. As they'll ride back in line once again, Kyle hanging on up top. Yeah, Kyle's hanging on on top. Big time move there about that 10th place position. I believe that was Charles Hosley that made a big time lane change. He's trying to ride the momentum going to the high side of the racetrack. Is yet we click off another lap in the history books here tonight. I better it's still the it's still early dude i mean can you believe we're only at lap 30 and we've seen all at least you know i really thought we would have seen uh you know at least a st a single file sitting here everyone just kind of riding all oh, the 96 got pushed below the double yellow he is able to gather it back up and onto the racing surface that was a massive code brown moment there for the dubby machine being piloted by dakota ramsier there we go, Christopher Melton there as well. Nice job, 30 of 100 complete. Man, I gotta get quit making trucking references. I'm gonna make myself laugh. I'm trying to make you laugh, it's gonna hurt me. Cause I just about started singing the club we song a minute ago as we're rolling around Daytona right now. Cause that's exactly what it looks like. Hey, you know what? Everyone in the in the YouTube chat, sound off if you want to hear him sing the convoy song. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. I'm not doing hey, that. Hey, you put it out there, not me. <laughs> <laughs> the 60 up front leading two by two now almost three wide now Aaron, look at this up front wow colton really able to drag them to the top we're starting to see that outside lane could it be a top line congo line right now they're trying that they're trying like heck to make it a top line congo line that's for certain as this is about far out as they have any lane has gotten since the drop of the green flag here tonight and that, of course, being lead, being led by no one other than Kyle Heath in that 13 machine, up four spots from where he started. 
He now transitions that top line down to the bottom. Oh, that's going to ruffle some feathers as the 60 gives the business to the 95. Forces him to the high side. Let's see if they get a run. All right, 32 on the board right now, 105. I will do it under the next caution, guys. Y'all twisted my arm. I will do it when we go to stage break. <laughs> be, be prepared if the new count's about to drop through the bottom there, Matt. <laughs> I think it's going to have just the opposite effect. Joshua King, Tanner, Martin Murphy, somebody call uh, old Simon Cow to get over here and watch this too. As we watch two <laughs> by two right now, Austin Hunt, Tanner, hanging tight. Man, you know, that's the thing, man. You're, you're full bore, you're throttled to pedal to the metal, but you've got to kind of burp that throttle just enough to not run up on that guy in front of you and bang into him too hard like we saw earlier and cause a absolute melee. Well, that's the thing. You got to have really good throttle control, especially, you know, when you're, you know, the third or fourth truck in the draft versus being the guy at the point. You know, the 13 right now, Heath, he is flat out wide open. He is pushing that uh, gas pedal through the floorboards as he slides up in. F oh, wow. Oh, just back and forth, solid on the wheel. Whoa. Oh. That was what I was afraid of as Tanner in that 95 had to check up. And the 89 of Melton was right on top of him. He almost got hooked. In, but he, he, what a save there by the 95. But that's what I get worried about when you see those abrupt lane changes like that. It stacks up the line. Someone's going to get a massive shot. Here comes the rookie, this, Adam O'Brien, splitting the gap here. He's like the needle through the eye of the thread. I mean, <laughs> here they come up the middle again. Yes, they did. The 74. Of O'Brien, are you kidding me? Wow, wow. They used the third lane to their advantage. That was absolutely brilliant. And they're wrecking, they're wrecking coming off the, coming off the, uh, off of four. Wrecking coming off of four. But we're still green. Huh. No caution as of yet. Race control has that discretion. You see trucks down low, that's early day. I think we'll keep rolling. David. How is that not a caution? The front clip of that truck went into the grandstands. But we're still green. Apparently our uh, audience in the grandstands are bionic robots. Because we don't need a yellow for that. David Dunwoody out front. David continue. Well, how does David Dunwoody get that truck up front again? Coming to the end of stage number two. You know... Maybe like they said about Earnhardt Sr., they say he could feel the air. He could see the air. Now, he used to joke about that, too. Maybe Dunwoody has one of those Earnhardt mustaches, an open-faced helmet, and he's using some tricks of the old in the, in, the, in the age of the new, perhaps. Maybe he's up there waving that black magic wand, keeping that truck up there. Who knows? Exactly. And he's got Harry Potter in the spotters, up there in the spotter stand? Yes. You know, when we do our uh, October shows, they're still too wide for Halloween. I'm going to be heavily disappointed if he's not dressed up as a witch. Oh, Dunwoody back to the bottom. Nice slide down for Dunwoody. Well, that was a that was a very nice controlled slide. <laughs> well said there, Matt. I was worried. Oh, hanging on. What do you do? He's still hanging tight right now, don't Woody. O'Brien just tight with him as well. Oh, look at Dumb Woody playing ha ha games with the front two lines. Looking like a pro out there tonight. Able to put that truck wherever he wants, when he wants. Utilizing the runs, but again, he stacks up that bottom lane. The 74 was just about in full blown drift mode. Saturday night special. Is now he's going to get a massive push as they weld each other's as those trucks get welded together. They're going to pull alongside the outside lane and let's see who can get the run coming off the corner. Here's going to be the high side or will the bottom lane prevail? Is it's a John Forrest special coming to the strike? Yes, they do. And look at this coming to three to go in stage number two tonight. And for an update for the viewers at home where they don't get confused, the ticker on the bottom of your screen that's going to be a pit road ticker. That's the drivers that are currently on pit road as we speak. The 28 there as well. 
still working the bottom. Both lanes pretty even right now. Let's see if we can get done. Let's see if we can watch Dunwoody as he does this. Let's see if we can pull that off. There we go. Well, that's he's, he's a little bit big. Let's turn that a bit. Yeah, see, Dunwoody is creating those runs by kind of backing up, you know, the line on the bottom here to kind of uh, to catapult him, get that energy to surge him out in front. And then he's doing a really good job of playing, you know, the outside line against the bottom as well. And he's just really able to, he's got a great spotter, I can tell you that, because there's no way he's holding on to that race truck with all of the drafting help and having that 74 just painted on the back of that truck at times and being able to execute without having great help and support. And that's what it's all about. It's not just the driver at times. It's about the whole team executing. And Dunwoody's team and that driver are doing it very well. As here comes another massive shot from the 74 of O'Brien. Or Brent, I'm sorry. He puts Dunwoody back out to the point. Once again, let's see if he comes up here and goes to the high side or if he sticks with the bottom, Matt. Here we go. Should be one to go in the stage right here, folks. Here we go, one lap to go. It's stage number two. Who is gonna get the all important stage points here late in stage two? Here comes Melton, the rookie on the top side. Melton's got plenty of help up there. He's got that 57, all or the 52, excuse me, of Cook all up on that rear deck lid right now. Oh, pushing so hard. There's gonna be all kinds no. of black paint on the back of that blue. 89 by the time that they're done coming out of Mel four. Go ahead. Say Melton was trying to come by with the screamer, but here comes Dunwoody. He engages the stage four afterburner as he's got a head full of steam. It's going to be a drag race to the end of the Geico restart zone, but Dunwoody has done and done it in one stage two here at Daytona. How? As everyone fans out to slow down. Dunwoody. Uh, all right, all right. I know Bully wow. Dog. I, I know Bully Dog Coffee sponsors that team. I know Bully Dog's in chat. Bully Dog, what in the what in the blue blazes have you put in your coffee now that he's doing this? Because whatever it is, I need some. It's called nitro methane. All right, they're making coffee out of nitro methane. <laughs> <laughs> nitro methane. Oh, let's uh, let's grab our stage two interview. He yeah. Surprisingly, Dunwoody again. And we'll talk to him. There's Dunwoody. He's going to get tired of talking to us. Oh, he ate. Up to the waiting room. Promise, folks, we'll try to interview more than just Dunwoody tonight, but he seems to be taking up the air time. Hey, Dunwoody, it's Matt and Matt in the booth again. Hey, Matt. Well, you engaged the uh, P4 afterburners. Whatever you got going on in that truck, and t once again, right back out to the stage win. Yeah, that guy behind me just stayed with me the whole time. That's uh, it's my teammate there. So there you go. We just made the call. Go together. to the middle. I'll Thanks tell you, R and D car. R and D truck, huh? Yeah, that's our that's our second team. <laughs> Dunwoody, you make it look so easy out there, but I know it's anything but. You guys practice a lot, the seat time, a lot of testing to make sure that you guys can execute the way you have done so far through uh, two stages of competition. We got that one hour of practice beforehand, but I ran trucks this afternoon as a test session. and uh, Just trying to learn. I was trying to make sure I could qualify good, which I didn't do, but I wasn't worried about it. But we run together a lot. I'll tell you what, man. It's been electrifying to watch you out there tonight. Best of luck, rest of the way. We'll let you get back to it out there on the track. Yeah, no problem. Have a good night. Electrifying like the people's champ, Mr. Dave <laughs> Dumbwoody, ready to get back to his chat here and get ready to go. And I know, guys, you're going to be disappointed, but it's stage break. It's that time again. I'm going to go commercial break, and then I'm going to do what I promised when we come back. All right, we are going to go with this. The commercial will be right back here in a moment, everyone. Hang tight for us. And again, thank you, every one of you, for coming out here tonight. And we'll be back. <laughs>
as we say in broadcasting, everything happens that you don't expect. So here we go, American Idol style for your boy over here. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we got ourselves a car <laughs> boy. <laughs> With the moon and fish and you live on dogs. Help <laughs> me with a reaper on and a Jimmy Hall and dogs. <laughs> boy, whoa, <laughs> there's, a, there's a rubber duck inside the bunch of hammer down. <laughs> Oh boy, look at the. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Can, can we get the medic, medivac team in here and get him scraped off the floor? <laughs> <laughs> As we've KO'd our producer tonight. We're never going to live that down, are we? We are never going to You're gonna never going to live that down. You. <laughs> we got your people. voice your voice changed about seven octaves there in five seconds i was deeply troubled <laughs> okay okay guys it's the boys who's gonna turn the chair around for me which team am i gonna be on i don't think i'm making blank steam i'm just yeah, we're just gonna give you a popsicle and sit you right here in the pit box for a couple minutes <laughs> <clears throat> And we are ready to go. Sure. It was oh, brilliant, Oh, my by the God. Way. My sister was watching. She just <laughs> acted. She's dying. Here we go. Into the Geico restart zone. Back under green flag once again. The top side trying to orchestrate a little bit of a early play here. A little three-truck three, three truck breakaway up top. But that bottom line formed up well once again as newcomer Sanders now in that 55 ride. And here they come right back in the middle. They love utilizing the middle lane here, which is often thought is the sucker hole, the black hole. Usually it's like a vacuum to the back of the train. These guys are have basically swapped roles with the, with the middle, and now they're using it for a pathway to the front. It's absolutely unbelievable. Is the 13 a Heath. No surprise, back out to the point. He carries the torch and stage the final stage here at Daytona. Nice job, everyone working their way through as they work up front. I'm sorry, a comment was great. It said better than Machine Gun Kelly at the Coliseum. Only because he didn't sing. But right now, they're working their way through two by two right now. <laughs> man, what a great race we're seeing here tonight, man. It has been a thriller from the drop of the green flag. We've had it all, but Matt, we haven't seen the peak yet. It is going to continue to escalate as we're going to start coming down to the wire here now sooner than later. Yeah, we are. We're going to come down to the wire right now. The 28, continuing to stay up front. I think Dunwoody's going to oh. do exactly. Oh, holy moly. Jeez, brown cow. Holy cow. Did you say brown cow? Yes. <laughs> you got to explain this to me. <laughs> Paul, Paul Witt just decides to send it and somehow perform the miracle at the parting of the Red Seas, and you call it a brown cow. Please, I am all ears. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know, bro. Right now, I'm winning the thing with the whole tight right now. Adam O'Brien, Kyle, Paul, Colton, and Justin there as well. Think about this, guys at home. If you're enjoying this tonight, we go to Atlanta next week. I'm sure it's going to be more of the same chaos and insanity and whatever else we come up with here in the booth. If we can get our PR person to get him a steak and a new pair of brown pants. Next commercial break, yeah, we'll, Matt would appreciate it. As they now get single file there on the bottom mat once again. Dunn, Woody, done and dusting them again right now. And look who's behind him. Mr. Shake and Bake himself, his trusty teammate, the rookie, once again, mind you. As they got that, they got that bottom line ripping now. But the 55 thought about peeking out there. He, he might do it. 
yeah, he thought about it. He got to the back bumper and got right there, stuck to him. It didn't come out of line. I think that was a smart move there because I think you know, when you start playing, you know, you know, a little bit of, you know, shadow games out there on the racetrack, that mental chess match start comes into play, you know, make fake someone to the outside, but then you don't go with them and you just send them basically right to the back of the field. You put them in the sucker hole. Yeah, putting them in and that I, sucker hole, we'll get them right. You get hung up there. It's, it, we call it a sucker hole, sucker hole because the air around these trucks getting in the middle usually does not work it just buffers that truck around a lot which usually for me personally i'm lifting a lot because of that and that is what kind of draws you back right and you know oh they get bunched up and squirrely oh. how did he save it oh oh they're still wrecking they're wrecking back there holy moly oh Caught it's big in time now. in the back the 46 spun like a helicopter there as he gets it pointed back straight that's going to be Charles Hosley, Channer sitting in it. Ted Craven, the 49. He got a piece of the action as well. Oh, let's take a look at that replay down the back straightaway. They wrecked about 10 times before it actually happened there, bud. But eventually everybody turned around, and there you go. Man, it could have been much worse just from this onboard view that we saw right here. That actually wasn't as bad as it could have been. No, I mean, we should have had a big time moment at the front of that field. I don't know how those guys up there saved it. I mean, it looked like the three stooges where everyone kind of runs into each other and somehow they all got, you know, figured out a way to get it sorted. But then that massive checkup just kind of, uh, you know, got flushed through the back of the field. And then you see where, it, uh, where the bomb finally exploded after the fuse got lit at the front. But you're right. It could have been a lot worse than it was. Great heads up. Great driving by all these competitors out there tonight. As we're now under caution here, once again, live from Daytona. As we creep up on halfway here tonight from Daytona Motor Speedway. And there we go. So caution is out near and halfway here tonight. Come on, guys. Eight likes. Go ahead and slam that like button here tonight let's see if we can get to 10 here tonight thank you to each and every one of you for coming up out as always i say this and i mean it i don't care if you're here for two hours 30 seconds four tenths of a second i appreciate each and every one of your views that you come out and uh, even take time to check out one of our shows here on extreme sim tv tonight the ama track race and truck series season opener live here in the rogue energy 250 thank you everyone so much that's right. They're a big reason why we do this mess for you guys out there right now. Showing the love to the series to us up here in the booth. That's a big part of what I do, what I do up here in the booth. And I know you as well, Matt. So like Matt said, myself included, we appreciate all your love and support. Joining us here in primetime on Extreme Sim TV for the opening race of the truck series. Is done what he's just about done everything here inside 49 laps. <laughs> he's done what done does it. he have? <laughs> he's done done it, right? What else can he do? And that's the thing. I would. I don't. I, I don't want to say that. <laughs> right? He's done everything. He's done everything but destroyed the field. <laughs> and, and there's so. and, and there's one more thing I'd like to say, you guys watching it, as far as how I appreciate this. I don't care what I got to do if I got to sing freaking Taylor Swift. If I can uh -oh. bring, <laughs> I better not say that. If I uh -oh. can, if I can bring a smile to your guys' faces, just once and cheer you up, I've done my job, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Well, Jimmy Eggenfelder in the YouTube chat says he wants to hear you sing Adele "Hello." And that's not happening. I my voice does not go that far. <laughs> oh. Well, oh, I think it does. <laughs> oh, no. That's you great. have a whole week to practice. I got a week to practice Adele. Okay. Practice. Atlanta Adele. Got it. Well, I'm thinking, what are you thinking, mm -hmm. Matt? I mean, you're halfway through. You've seen the craziness. And, uh, man, these guys getting at her once again. 50 of 100 complete. We still got half of this race to go. What is the move that you make now? Or do you kind of wait for 
the, the move later on. Well, we're, we're making moves. It doesn't matter if it's, it's lap 50, 75, 95. We're making big-time moves here each and every completed lap out here under green flag conditions. And I, I think if you're not up on the wheel being aggressive, you're going to be on the outside looking in, especially with, you know, just the, the aggression and the energy that's out there currently flowing uh, throughout all these trucks and competitions. So I think you have to be after it. You know, treat this race like it's under 10 laps to go unless things start to settle down a little bit. But I haven't seen any indication that it's going to go in that direction. No, I'll eat my hat if it settles down because that's not going to happen. Thanks Tabasco sauce on his hats, guys, just in case you're wondering. Can pour on that or garlic sauce. <laughs> or, or garlic sauce, that's right. Well, I've got a cowboy hat in there. I can, I'm going to wear it in Texas. So. <laughs> that, that's, yeah, I'll wear that in Texas. Maybe next week we can do a live uh, Tabasco chug challenge. Oh, okay, we can do that. I don't, hey, I, I'm here. I'm looking for a fun Friday night all year long, guys. We're going to have a blast. I don't care. Me and Matt get together here, and we're going to have a blast each and every Friday. Matt's usually with us on Wednesday. Unfortunately, he had a little bit of a battle with the strip bug that he had to get over. Yeah, but, it's uh, not even that I'm over it. I just, my voice was just gone. Could not speak, could not, couldn't do anything. I was sick that I missed the, uh, the you know, the cup race at Daytona or a majority right. of it. So your voice was gone, kind of like MJ, K, MG, MG, or Machine Gun Kelly at the Coliseum? No comment. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go once Three. again. David Dunwoody leads. Let's go. David Dunwoody, who's done just about everything that needs to be done other than win at Daytona. He's up 35 positions. He has been electrifying near the front of the field. He's changed lanes. He's been, been held on the low side. He has been at it on the high side. Dunwoody coming back up through the gearbox once again. Is Easter Day on the bottom now going to surge ahead? With a big shot there from no surprise, the 04 of Klaus Williams, the veteran, now showing his way inside the top three for the first time here tonight, Matt. Yeah, there we go. And again, showing himself forward. We got a lot of dark horses uh, in the chat talking about Ramsdale being a, uh, or Dakota, Dakota there being a uh, dark horse. We got a lot of them that's up there that, that could be. Uh, a shot at this one tonight that you necessarily wouldn't think immediately. But look at Liam Anderson. Liam right there in the mix as well. Yeah, Anderson right now on the move, up 23 spots from where he started. Another another vehicle, you know, another competitor that started way deep in the back of this thing. Only, you know, 55 short laps ago, or 53 laps ago, excuse me, is now we see the 29 come up there to the top side of the racetrack. Dunwoody now goes to the high side. That's going to leave the door. Yeah. Easter Day getting after it right now. Not lifting at all. And that's what you got to do. You just got to go, man. You just got to go for it. That's all you can do. Quickly refiring up. Yeah, and, and that's the hard part of plate racing, right? Everybody says, oh, plate racing is easy. Plate racing is easy. Plate racing. No, it's not. It is a talent unto itself. Being a good plate racer is its own niche talent. I argue that every time I hear this argument, and I mean it to this day, these guys are very talented when it comes to the style of racing. The only dark horse not here tonight is the Mustang. 
Oh, trouble back straight away. Yeety yeet, we got problems. Somebody got yeeted in the back. And no caution, and that is going to be no bueno for somebody. Now, again, this was discussed a lot in admin meetings. Should we have yellows uh, admin-wise or no? And we ended up voting no on it. But this is the exact scenario where that can happen, where the cars end up in the grass, and iRacing doesn't throw it. Ted Craven's still having problems in the grass, and the field is coming weather quickly. He's going to get straightened up here, and that's that's the heartbreaker uh, as a broadcaster slash part, league partner is, you know, you wish well, you could do something, but you can't in that scenario. Well, not only that, I'm not going to say who, but someone's probably madder than a Keebler Elf getting demoted to Fudge Packer after that incident happened out there just moments ago. As you said, no caution. They're going to need some help to get back into this one. Is it still a slugfest here at the point? Place your bets on the high side. The low side is Dunwoody and Easter Day are putting on a clinic at the point. And time running out, man. We've already burned through 57 laps here tonight. We knew these trucks were, truck races were going to be short this year, and it's proven it once again as we're 57 completed 100 miles. That's right, 57 laps written in the history books. Dunwoody contends to get it done here at the big house at Daytona. A lot of Ds, I know. Yeah, and, and However, that's, that's, go ahead. That's the thing. Dunwoody is so good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm stuck on this. I watched this man last year. He was good at plate racing. But this year, it's a total different Dunwoody when it comes to a plate track tonight. This is a much more aggressive Dunwood. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, as you grow, especially you get more seat time with the league in a series, you know, it, it takes time to learn how, you know, everyone races, you know, the culture, this, that, and the other. And like you said, Dunwoody has felt he has need to turn up the aggression a little bit, you know, the, uh, the drive inside of that truck, and he certainly has done that. But, I mean, I mean Adam O'Brien right there, O'Brien, you know, in that... Uh, that 74 machine now takes over that second place position. Klaus Williams in that 04, a veteran. We know he can get it done. Mark Murphy, 69 time himself, now in fifth. Liam Anderson right there as well. And we have some other guys starting to creep towards the front that we haven't seen inside the top 15 since the drop of the green flag. So look to see some new faces here inside the top five, top 15 here momentarily. Klaus Williams. Your reigning, defending AMA Truck Series champion right now. Rolling up and showing these boys why he won a title one year ago. Back in November, and he's back here going at it again. Right at the front of the field. And you just, you knew it was going to happen at some point when Klaus Williams would assert himself and say, hey, don't forget about me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a champ for a reason. This race ain't over as he now continues to poke towards the front. Now that second truck in line, eating hard on the bottom once again. Gloss Williams giving a big shot there to that uh, 60 machine who continues to lead the inside train. Again, that is Easter Day on the bottom. Done what he moving forward to as well there, Matt. Yeah, Murphy in the 69 machine there. He is even with the board. Started six, runs six right now. Mark Murphy as well, running some very, very consistent lap times. He's just about mirroring them each and every lap. Is the in the as the bottom, they're getting ready to go places. As they get all stacked up there beautifully. And you can see how when they release that energy, that line just shot towards the front. I, I tell you what, the one truck that I've noticed, man, that's not doing great tonight, that's Michael Kurt back here. He's kind of hanging back. I don't know if he's busy going through the Krispy Kreme uh, drop through window or what's going on here, but right now he's hanging on to that 26 spot. I just don't think that truck's driving how he how he wants it. I think he got a piece of he caught a piece of that action. I think that happened uh, very early in the race when it kicked off big time at the front. And I think he's just aerodynamically, that truck is just not working for him. You know, and he's trying to just figure out what he can do. But clearly, he needs to be in the buried in the pack to be able to maintain pace speed right now. 
Maybe he'll have another opportunity to come down pit road, but nonetheless, not going for Kirk how he wanted now through 61 laps of competition. There we go. Pete says in chat here, in honor of Extreme Sim TV, I'm going. I'm giving out free hugs to anyone who finds me before the race Sunday. Pete, bud, uh, I appreciate the gesture, and uh, I mean, I won't be there, but air hug. Eh? Does that work? Working our way through right now. 62 on the board. Ooh, someone got off track there. At Ford F-150, was that Samuel, I believe, in the 52? Yeah, I believe it was. that front right back up. He did a great job gathering it up. 62. Yeah, usually. Go ahead. Usually when you get pushed down that below that double yellow, it's really treacherous coming back up into traffic, but he didn't panic, was patient. Did a great job getting back in line. Well, what makes that so treacherous is down there on the apron, it's usually full of uh, garbage and, you know, marbles and giggity <laughs> gook. And it really becomes a problem if it gets on these hot tires, man. And you can really lose a truck down there. Man. Absolutely. You absolutely can. Or you get some of those hot dog wrappers stuffed into, stuffed into the grill, cut the airflow off to the radiator as well. So not only is it uh, treacherous, when you come off the transition, off that banking onto the flat, you have to worry about picking up all that hot garbage and potentially taking you out of the race because we've seen it before. You know, a hot dog wrapper can ruin your day here at Daytona. As crazy as it sounds, I promise you, it can make you overheat and put, make you finish the race on pit road. You're absolutely right. Big moves deeper in the pack. The green machine, Justin Sanders in the 55. Made a big-time dive bomb from the top lane to the bottom. He pulls the squeeze job. He's coming forward as well. And I'm back, folks, and I just got in trouble for throwing away a salted caramel cream cake of some sort that I wasn't aware that I wasn't supposed to throw away. Sorry about that. Look, look at when you throw it out, you got to put it in the outside trash can. They always check the inside trash. Always. Oh. Um, you know that look when they just look at you and you're like, oh, I'm dead. Oh, 65 right now. And this race burning by with 35 to go right at the moment. Just 35 laps remain. Will it be one of the front runners that we've seen up front, Matt? Will it be Klaus Williams? Will it be Dunwoody? Dunwoody, Easter Day. Did you just say Mark Murphy? Did you just say Dunwoody? <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It, yep, it, yep. it will like be Dunwoody. Dunwoody. <laughs> hey, why not? <laughs> I was trying to say Klaus Williams and Dunwoody, and then, well, see it happens, folks. Easter Day continuing to lead right now. This is either, this, this, this is either gonna be the race we get promoted or get fired. I don't know which one yet. King right there in the mix. Paul well, as long as the, go ahead. Adam O'Brien there as well. Adam O'Brien there as well indeed. Hard charge into the front now. And I think what we're starting to see here, Matt, is some of these drivers that just decided to ride in the back and wait for the Wait for that right time to start moving forward and getting aggressive out there as you see the 53 a little further back in the field making some big moves as he closes in on the back of the 12 machine. Making making his way up front as well. You can see that energy, that, uh, that, that urgency. Go time is quickly approaching and that's typically when you see the, everything escalate to a whole new level out there on the track. There we go. And oh, Nelly, out of trouble. The girlfriend has reached out to the chat for support in her anger about the big gome thing that was in the fridge. Oh, boy. All right, 67 on the board. Two by two. I thought I had seen it all until now. Claus Williams, David Dunwoody, right there in the mix all stuff. Liam Anderson, Mark Murphy. 
Paul Witt. Next week, folks, I may be live broadcasting you from the outside barn. So catch Adam next week's broadcast. David Dumbling. Just go get some ice cream and uh, some whipped cream, some caramel syrup, problem solved. There we go. Tom Woody now going to get shoved to the lead. Here comes Adam O'Brien. O'Brien, give Tom Woody that shove. And Tom Woody was able to drop it down and make it happen. Yeah, Tom Woody drops the hammer, drops it down low to the bottom, just like you said, Matt. And right there again, Dunwoody right back in, in the lead once again, making it look so easy in that 28 machine. And again, every time I see it in our internal scoring notes and on our displays, up 35 spots. I mean, it's, he's not a fluke. He is keeping that truck right up there in contention. Oh, did you see what just happened at the front? We were on board there with Kendall Paul in the back, but it got dicey up front. Again, Kendall Paul. <coughs> Kendall Paul trying to move that truck forward after his win last last night, trying to go two for two. Well, Ter it's huge. Pterodactyl, I got a question for you. I hate to bring this up, but if we stay green, will fuel become an issue? Absolutely will become an issue, but limited payload here on fuel i don't think we're going to be able to go the scheduled distance however i think if there's another caution with a little bit of help you could roll the dice and go with the sunoco race fuel strategy to get you get you into victory lane but typically at daytona talladega matt what happens once you see one caution flag rate caution flag late those restarts oh, oh. big time problems is someone gets shut off it into the end it was done it was done woody Dunwoody with a problem. Man, broadcaster jinx. That's a little bit more than a problem. He got sh shot out there like a massive lawn dart. Didn't Not sure if he was anything. Clip that. It was Dunwoody. Go ahead and clip that, guys. <laughs> and he'll bring it I don't back. know how he didn't make contact. Well, can he pull it off here? He just got turned. Do you think he can make a return if we get a yellow? Well, let's see. Right now, after that incident, he's being scored in that 23rd position. But, Matt, the biggest problem is he's over 18 and a half seconds off the pace. He's going to need a caution flag. He's going to need something to get him back caught up with that lead pack because, you know, a single truck out here by itself is pretty much a sitting duck and he's going to be you know 10 to 15 miles an hour off the pace and again this becomes the problem that we talked about earlier another good example of that rule that was voted on by the league committee not to throw the yellow for those types of things and with i racing again if you're off the racing surface chances are they're going to leave it green just like just like you guys just witnessed Live here on Extreme Sim TV is the dominant man, Mr. Excitement tonight, David Dunwoody. Got done a little dirty, perhaps. Got sent for a ride into the grass, was able to collect it back on the racetrack, but now finds himself 19 seconds off the pace. Is Dunwoody now hoping for a miracle, a caution flag to save his, they save his race at daytona yeah there you go he's gonna need that yellow late as we're coming down to what would be 28 to go here in florida tonight now a rookie out front look at that jacob Tur uh, turner leading jordan strode right there behind him look at jordan go justin osman look at this rookie 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 our first veteran is not until seventh of austin it's a rookie party out front it is. And again, like I said early in the broadcast, Matt, just because it says rookie, they may be new to this series, but they're not new to iRacing. And some of these rookies are putting on a big-time flex. Oysterman, Strode, I mean, just to name a couple. The 81, we haven't really seen him up inside the top three all night. There he is. Here comes Jordan Strode in the 81, newcomer into the top five. Oh, and don't forget about Paul Witt in the 29 ride. He is now in fourth. 
Now, I, we, I know it's early as we got trucks to pit road. O'Brien on pit road right now. I understand it's early. It's February. We go to November, guys. But, again, playoffs. You win here. You stay in the You're top in. 20 in points. You're golden. And that changes up the entire perspective for the season from now up until race one of the playoffs which would be huge for a couple of these teams, especially to get those playoff tickets punched early on in the season. Well, you look at that, and we talked to Kendall Paul about that literally yesterday after his win. Think about this, man. What is it, September, October when the playoffs start? You go through the entire summer with no words. As we got trucks to pit road, here we go. Pit road has begun to become busy. Car around on pit road to 74. Oh, on the money stop. Sometimes we have issues hitting that, coming out off that racing surface, and around goes the truck off into the grass. Oh. Thank Man. you, Matt. I appreciate that. But when you're going to have problems on pit road, when the pressure is on, it is really easy to crack and break, especially when you're trying to hit that, hit that commitment cone, that line without speeding but getting all the good out of it that you can and sometimes that's that can give you some trouble there on pit road entry which is what we've seen it's now it's a mad dash off the pit road under oh, green flag conditions whoa 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 mcdonald's holy moly give me a big mac and another one around on pit road to 92. jeez almighty kevin fry in that 92 machine went for a ride it can't be kevin fry because i just said mcdonald's Fry, oh, I thought you said 92. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was fry. You're right, actually. I said McDonald's and it's fry. Wow. Okay, that was not intentional. Oh, he just looped it in front of four or five trucks. The liquid death machine had a little too much rear brake dialed in it there. It <sighs> just came right around on him. Right. Now has it right pointed round, in his pocket. Right sorry. Little Jordan low rider Lee. going on. Jordan out of pit road. On the brakes. Can we get down without a problem? We do. Jordan. Meanwhile. Go ahead. Say meanwhile, while Matt's covering all the pit road action, Jordan or Justin Oysterman, another rookie, leads the charge, and now he's gonna come down pit road, relinquish the lead to the 29 of Paul Witt. busy on pit road right now and everything starts to cycle what do you do here as you look at this uh, pit road and everything going on on pit road man with them coming to 20 to go now or 23 to go we'll be good to go to the end man i did not expect to see green flag stops here tonight and i don't think some of these drivers did too especially the way that things kicked off with some really violent wrecks that happened early on you know these drivers have kind of you know, calm things down as this race progresses. Typically, it's just the opposite. And uh, green, flag, green flag pit stops, uh, hot and heavy right now here at Daytona. You know, but if you're asking me, Matt, this is all about executing at a very high level right now. You've had a chance to go out there and, and log laps on the racetrack. You have a great idea now of where your truck's strength and weaknesses are. You know who you're gonna work with. You got those deals cut. You just have to execute on pit road there Get off a of pit road on and off with a decent, decent, in a decent amount of time, and now get back into contention here with a shot to win this thing. As Oysterman once again continues to carry the torch, but this field now is strung out, it's really spread out. That's another new uh, situation developing here on the racetrack. We're used to seeing that big pack of trucks, you know, two by two. Now everyone's kind of scattered around this racetrack. It's really going to change the complexity of this race. Yeah, they're literally scattered around like ants around the racetrack. And again, to your point, that is going to change virtually everything. Man, I, I, I didn't, you didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. Nobody really expected Green Flag to stop tonight. But here we are. And, and that is Daytona. Just when you think you know you have it figured out, she throws a curveball at you. Yes, she's she going to serve. 
I mean, now it's all, you know, this can come down to, you know, what three, four drivers can work together the best in tandem. Remember, remember the two car tango back from the COT era, perhaps, yeah. you know, that's gonna, maybe that's going to come into factor here. Who can work with three, four trucks the best here right. and just put down some screaming lap times to go up here and catch this, uh, you know, this, this, the leader right now, Justin Oysterman. I mean, you 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 gotta you gotta work together to your point to get there, right? The gap right now, you see it there on your screen. Two trucks on the outside starting to pull it forward. Now three or four trucks, nice and tight. That's what you're gonna need to get there. Right, you can't be two by two. Two by two, it's just gonna slow you down. You need to run single file. Everyone in a the group, they all need to work together. You know, just as if you're on the same team until you know you, you get within striking distance and then it's every man for himself now it's, it, by my math uh, from what i'm seeing here he's still gonna have to hit pit road at some point it's awesome so he's, yeah oysterman one of the very few that have not been down pit road for their final pit stop that is absolutely correct so this is going to be very interesting to how this plays out with 20 laps to go, right? Because you got these these guys right here, Dakota, Justin, all these guys up front. You're going to have to play hard and play fastball here to pull this off as you're late into the going. And we'll go to our, uh, our uh, wider angle view. And to your point, these guys are going to have to do exactly what you said, a lot of working together here to wait to pull this all together. Here comes Osterman down pit road as we speak. So Osterman on pit road, he will bring that 53 down. Nice stop to his stall. Nice and smooth entry. The only issue I see with it is he was all by himself. Well, he, he definitely doesn't here now. Austin... Here comes that big pack of trucks, and they're going to swallow him up like Pac-Man here. Yeah, he don't stand a prayer here. Something happened to, you know, one of his battle buddies out there on the racetrack, but I don't, there's, I don't think that was the plan, to come down all by himself after staying out. There's something probably didn't execute right or how he had hoped. Well, as some famous boxers and everybody in the world always says, you have a plan and he get hit in the face. Then you don't have a plan. Anymore. Austin, Samuel, Kyle. Yesterday there, and look who's made his way to the top ten. Last night's winner, Kendall Paul, up inside the top ten. How about that? Kendall Paul said, hey, don't forget about me. 78, you're right, now has cracked the top 10 in that ninth place position. After Daytona, what did Kendall Paul say? He wanted to be more patient. He wanted to work on his racecraft and just make sure he had a truck that could contend for the win later on in the race. And that's exactly what he's done there here tonight, Matt, is he is now lurking, moving his way methodically towards the front as these laps continue to wind down as we're now writing lap 84 in the history books. Yeah, now my question to you and, and really to Kendall too and my thoughts here is very simple tonight. You look at Kendall Paul. He worked a year to break the strike of getting a lead win and got that one night ago. He got that monkey off his back, if you will. Do you think it comes in stride here? Could he go two for two, two nights in a row? Absolutely can. 
you know, once you break through, and as you said, you, you get that omen off your back, how many times in real life have we seen drivers, you know, go back to oh, back, or gonna, sometimes... Oh, lap traffic, sorry. Oh, that looked bad for a moment. Whoa! Oh. Get skinny. Uh -huh. Kevin LePage flashed through my brain. I ain't gonna lie there. Yeah, mine too. And Oh, don't lose it down there, 55. Wow. Everybody negotiating their way through. Sorry to this, cut you off, but I thought that was going to get nasty in a hurry. Oh, no, I'm, I'm glad you did. <laughs> At 55, taking a walk on the wild side. Justin Sanders. I, I'm, I'm going to resurrect something here tonight. You, does anybody remember the Jimmy Spencer crying towel from Speak TV days? Absolutely, I do. I, I'm going to give the crying towel to David Dunwoody because he's about to go lap down right here. After a awesome performance he's gonna go a lap down now his only hope is stay in first truck one lap down well stay in first truck one lap down and there is no one praying for a caution flag harder right now than dunwoody and you're right matt you know he has to be absolutely boiling over with emotion inside the cockpit of that vehicle especially after the performance he has had tonight but hey, the checkered flag hasn't fallen yet. Anything could happen here. Just to give you an idea of his performance tonight, 30, 24 laps led the most of anybody in the field right now. And that's by a long shot. Yeah, that, that's by a good 10, 12 laps here. And you see this front pack negotiating. Now, he's done a good job, I will say. He fit in with this front pack right there on the box. So he did good there. But the problem is, it, it's going to be no nothing if he doesn't get a caution in here. And I would say relatively soon. Yeah, he's going to need a caution, you know, sooner than later, right? Because you need the yellow but, to get back on the lead lap. But you also need time after that to work your way back up. Well, I think for Dunwoody, if he gets that caution... If you want to see someone tear through the field like Jimmy Spencer from back in the day, watch the former Mr. Excitement and the new modern era iRacing Mr. Excitement, a.k.a. Dunwoody here at Daytona. Because if I promise you, Matt, if he gets the chance, it trouble. is going to get Trouble, trouble, but they saved it. Oh. oh, they are teasing the Dunwoody camp right now. Is that what it could have, should have? But we stay green here at Daytona. Now, let me break down this Dunwoody situation. That 20 truck he's pushing, that is his pseudo teammate of Colby. Oh, no. This this is going to be big. What do you do? He's got to keep Co uh, Colby on the lead lap right now. It, right? Because if he goes down as of this moment, the 20 is the first truck one lap down. And he's your teammate. What does Dunwoody do? That's probably the worst place, worst case scenario to be in, right, Matt? And caution's out. Caution flag is out. And it's going to go to the 20. The 20. The oh. 20. And we got a truck upside down. The 18 of Liam Anderson roll rescue he is doing down a, to three and four because he is on his lid. Yeah, he just did a massive lid slide, at least 250, 300 feet. Oh, man. He's not not supposed to be facing that way something oh. obviously something happened all oh, the 74 is. got right hooked holy oh. moly dang yum and he is on pit road I, that's one of those times when you're glad it's a sim or it's sim racing and not real life racing he's gonna have to be headed to the virtual local medical facility after that one not only that, some of these newer direct drive wheels, yeah, that's you accidentally what worries me. bums rest in the holes. Oh. All kidding aside, we joke about that, but these direct drives, if you get your fingers or anything in the wrong spot at the wrong time, it can Break do em. some danger, some damage. Trust me. Not, don't ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't even on a direct drive. All right, it happened. 40 people watching. Thank you guys so much. 
for the highest viewed truck series race uh, on the channel. Thank you guys yet again. Again, it's been a fun night with 10 to go. It's all that YouTube family coming together, supporting these guys out here tonight, racing their tails off in prime time. And again, you want to join the family, it's easy. Smash the like button, ring the bell, come home to Extreme Sim TV, your esports racing action leader. Seven days of high flying, high octane racing action right here on Extreme Sim TV. As we're now on lap 91, caution in the air once again. So, if you're. Go ahead. Go for it, brother. It's all you. I'm, I'm over here doing some Matharuni. Now, we all know me and Matharuni's bad. You've got. Matharuni. Matharuni. You got. Hi, Sharona. You got 10 to go, right? So, we're going to get to restart somewhere with 6 to go, most likely. David's now trapped one lap down. He almost needs an immediate caution. Then that would restart him 21st. Man, I, I hate to say it, that's a tall order for the 28. Uh, it's, it, you know, hits you right in the gut, especially if, you know, obviously you're him inside that truck or his team. So that's certainly not indicative of the performance they've had on the racetrack tonight. But again, Matt, I'm gonna, it, it's not over yet. The white flag isn't in the air. You know, we're not coming to the checkered flag. There's still laps on the board. I mean, this track, it's two, two and a half miles. This, we're not talking a quarter mile or a half mile at Martinsville. You know, there's still a lot of racing left. You know, we're under caution now. A lot of times at the end of these things, we see one caution. You can easily get 10 before, you know, this thing is all said and done. I don't think Dunwoody is done yet. No, I don't think so either. And if you look back, and let's discuss this really quick. And think about this back when he was battling so hard for that stage win earlier in the night now you look at it and you think to yourself makes sense right because now now in this predicament those stage points can kind of make up for a not so stellar finish if he can't get his lap back the drivers you know in nascar they wanted them to, they wanted to get something for their good performance. And that's why, you know, a lot of the stage race in this era, this evolution has been, in, you know, invoked and evolved. So these guys that do run up for, for majority of the race, they get some benefit. They get something out of it. And you're absolutely right. That's a great way to at least uh, try and capitalize on a bad situation. You know, going out there, winning two stages, at least he'll have a little bit more points than if he was just, you know, awarded points for finishing, let's say, 23rd or 26th as it sits right now. Yeah, and there you go. That will be the uh, the way we roll right now with eight laps to go. I'm yeah. sorry, that is 21st, 21st position right now. Yeah, 21st, there we go. All right, so it'll be eight to go. Austin, Samuel Cook, Kyle. Paul, Kendall Paul, right there, Paul Witt and Kendall Paul. You got the Paul and Paul show there. Let's take a look here at Kendall Paul, man, because his career stats in this series from last year, let's see if we can get it to show up here for everybody. It's 17 times he got a top 10 last year. Eight top fives last season going to try to add to that tonight with the big zero in the column of wins getting no we wants one of those taking a look at Austin here let's pull his up really quick Austin last year picked up one win had nine top fives with 12 top tens last season notice a trend here the guys that did well last year right up here at the front again Eight. Green flag back in the air. Whoa, he went real, wow, deep in the box. He may have waited for the flag. That really stacked up the lines as he was trying to play some games, and it looks like he came out on top. Is the 13 now of Heath all over the back of Lund, and Cook's with him on the bottom. Here we go. We're cooking a peanut oil now as they work the bottom of the racetrack. How is this going to go? 
Oh my goodness, this is gonna be very interesting. What can you do? Oh, this now here's here's that aggressive side draft, and look how the 52 of Cook is pitching down on the 15 and the 13 there. That's Heath and London, the 15th. Now they're gonna widen it a little back out in the corner there, just a little bit, but they're really leaning on each other, trying to basically deploy that virtual air break, utilizing that side draft. Yeah, trying to do everything they can. You're on board right now with Paul Witt, Kendall Paul up here in the front back. Coming to seven to go, Mark Murphy there as well. Jacob Turner, Austin continuing to hold. Austin and Melton. Oh, go ahead. Hey, Melton now inside the top 10 as well. Man, Melton, right. Oh, man, this is going to get really good. I got this heebie jeebies, man. This is going to get good. You can feel it. It's like the, like Phil Collins said, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. And it is now here at Daytona. Three wide as we are... the field. Oh, no. <laughs> Look what David did. Look at David. Out. Oh, David Dunn. Oh, he's in there it. it goes. It's a one, two whackables. We got one, two, four, five cars, five trucks around. Caution flag back in the air. And guess who wanted to see that yellow more than anybody? Dunwo Dunwoody, welcome back to the big show. Not quite. Dunwoody got involved. Oh. Oh, oh. oh the 28. Oh. Oh, I'd be sick. So it looked like he was trying to follow him three wide there and just got pinched up by the 19 of Did Dunwoody. He was trying to race hard to try to unlap himself the old school way. It's not going to pay off. Is that David Dunwoody truck now on pit road? And unfortunately, I think that's officially the end of the night for Dunwoody. Yep. And that's just... Oh, you just, it's just so tough to take as a, as a driver for that team. Just being out there and, you know, performing the way they did tonight and to end it, end this race in the pits. But Matt, we said at the top of the broadcast, it's Daytona. Anything can happen. Don't, you know, don't let, don't fall back of the racetrack, right? You got to stay ahead of the game. And sometimes, you know, in spite of the best efforts, it just doesn't go your way. Can I? And that's that, right. I, I'm gonna pin a comment right now. I love this. How do I pin a comment? Right, right there. There it is. I pinned a comment for Pete. He says, and I quote, "I'm happier than a tornado in the trailer park." <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh goodness! See, that's why you like the guys in the chat because. They can oh. say things that we can't say. Oh, trust me, he's 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 happy. <laughs> I pinned that for Kendall to see it after the race. <laughs> Kendall will appreciate that too. Kendall to storm chased her as well. Oh. Happier than a tornado in a trailer. A trail. <laughs> Let's see what we've got here. As messed up as that is. <laughs> uh, before to go this time by. Pete says, just remember, I was here before you guys blew up. I got you, Pete, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, we, yeah, Pete. Thanks. We, we, need to, we need to make a T-shirt. How do we do this as an audience system of a Street Fit TV tornado in a trailer park t shirt? <laughs> well, it's inspired by Pete, that's how. Oh. See, we're, we're giving we're giving back to the ones that give to us on the broadcast. Should we go out to Tornado Alley and give out free t shirts? Jeez. Oh god. Five to go. Oh. Well, I <laughs> let's let's talk about that first off air for for the go this time by Austin Samuel Cook and Kyle Heath your top three tornado is right around the corner right my sister's gonna see that she's gonna throw something at me oh. duck and cover buddy duck and cover more to go this time by 
right now, it's Austin bringing him that. Could Austin do it? That would be huge for him if he could pull this off. The abs. I mean, if anyone could do it, Matt. Realistically, anyone on the lead lap can do it. Kendall Paul's right there in fifth. Paul Witt in the 29. Up six spots from where he started. He's in fourth. You know, Samuel Cook, that 52. We really haven't seen him up this high in the, on the pylon. You know, what does he bring to the mix? We don't know how he's going to attack these guys here. You know, coming back to a green flag here is we will get one opportunity, I believe, at a natural finish. If we get a yellow flag after this next green flag, that's going to kick us into overtime. Right. But these boys are going to try and get it done right here, right now. Here we go. With oh. You ready, buddy? See, this is I'm holding it. on. This I don't know if I'm ready, but I'm holding on. Blow out the ears, ears, the ears of the viewers from screaming for the next about three minutes. So, forewarned, everybody. I'm ready. You're ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, Eddie. Down the back straight away we go, Halston. Samuel, your top two. You ready, Squidward? I'm holding off. Because <laughs> it's about to get dicey. You might well you might want to put your clarinet away, because here we go. It'll be three laps to go. Out of turn four. Austin, Samuel Cook, Kyle Heath, Paul Wint, Kendall Paul, Mark Murphy, Jacob Turner, George McCon, Jordan, and Joseph Melton, and Claus, the man Williams at 11th. Here we go. It is go time in Daytona. Green flag back in the air. The Geico restart zone. Hahn makes it very, very late into the restart zone. Now decides to mash the gas pedal. Coming up through the gearbox one more time. It's a three-car tandem down low with Honda Heath. And is that Paul up in the third? It is. That's the 78. Where did Kendall Paul come from? He is now in third. As the top four trucks now are single file, trying to break away as the rest are stacked two by two. Two by two like dominoes behind them. Paul trying to pull the magic one yet again. Paul on the outside. Austin truck spinning behind them. We stay green. Yet again, trucking it on the apron. Doesn't throw the yellow, man. Doesn't throw the yellow, but look who is now in third. 29 time, Paul Witt up seven spots. He is now in the catbird seat as we see a big time move. Paul Witt goes to the high side, trying to utilize that momentum. Two fingers in the air right now from the flag stand. Paul Witt, can he get it done here? He is trying to come up here and literally steal one. Oh. And he gets turned in front of the field. Kendall Paul turned him in. It's field. a mess. Oh, no. It's a tornado in a parking lot. <laughs> oh, no. Paul Witt. Oh! oh. Did you? Yes. He what? It wasn't clear. Have you ever? Oh, I've never. That is a third of the field, and the only man looking good out of that is Kendall Paul. How did Paul get through that? Well, you see, in in construction, we call that piece of machinery a bulldozer, sir. Oh, wow. That's millions of dollars worth of equipment laying over there on the back straightaway destroyed. Still parts raining down. It's raining parts. Oh, Lord have mercy. It's raining oh. parts. <laughs> the 50 around the three as well. And then this late hit you were talking about. He goes to move and nope, not clear. Oh. There's nothing clear about that situation. Uh, you know, but again, that's, look, this is what happens, right? I mean, can't hold anything back. It's, it's for, it's for everything. It's, it's for, you know, it's for the win. It's, you know, it's Daytona. So much on the line, you know, and we almost 
about guaranteed we'd probably see another incident on the racetrack. I didn't think it would be the biggest wreck of the night. Oh. But nonetheless, me, that's what it was. Me and you got to breathe. Holy cow. What a night. Breathe? Yeah. I forgot what that was. <laughs> me too. Folks, we're going to do our final round of commercial breaks. When we come back, it will be time for a green, white, checkered in Daytona, and you know exactly what that means. Chaos and insanity is about to ensue. We'll see you in a moment. Welcome back. It's good old MJ with, <laughs> with the Bat King Crasher over here on Friday Night AMA Track Racer Truck Series. <laughs> we are ready to go. <laughs> Kendall Paul Weeds here tonight. Oh. Yeah, Kendall Paul Pioneer through the field late and use his clarinet in stride here at Daytona to blast his way across the finish line first. Or will that dubby machine behind him, Samuel Cook, the rookie, perhaps give him the business as they come down to the stripe? You guys decide. Matt, I got my pick. I know you got your pick. If you're live with us in the chat right now, let us know who you got. Who do you think is going to take... Take it to the house here when the checkered flag drops. As oh. we go into overtime, green, white, checkered style. So, Matt, this is how it's going to work. We're going to take the green flag. We're going to come up to speed. We're going to make one circuit, one lap around this 2.5-mile oval. If we make it back to the start-finish line without incident, we're going to take the white flag. Once we get that white flag, we are racing back to the checkered flag. However, if there's an incident before the leader makes it back around to the stripe, we're going to have to re-rack him, restack him, do it again, and I believe for a maximum of three attempts. There we go. It is time. Are you ready? Green, white, checkered, folks. We know Pete's ready. We know Pete's ready. We know Swamp King's ready. We know Bully Dog's ready. We are ready to get it going. What Dude. is a Swamp Donkey? I don't Swamp King, not Swamp Oh, I thought you said Swamp Donkey. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> swamp Donkey. <laughs> Here we go. I swore you said Swamp Donkey. Here we go. Two by two, coming down the back straight away once again. Oh, breathe, man, because it's going to be nuts, I'm telling you. You know what's funny? You want to talk about energy? You got two energy drinks on the front row. You got Rogue Energy on the bottom, and you got Dubby on the high side. What more could you ask for? Yeah, exactly. And uh, Swamp King has responded to you, sir, with... Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> I, I don't want to know right now. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I'll check out Urban Dictionary following the broadcast. I'm sure I can figure it out from there. Here we go. Coming to green. It is time. Green flag to fly. We're racing in the green-white checkered here at Daytona. 
Green flag in the air. Everyone gets a clean restart here as they climb up through the gears one more time. Kendall Ball in that 78 machine has somehow found his way to the front as he's got Mark Murphy in the chicken pit. Ford F-150 behind him. Come. Now a group of four trucks on the bottom. Can that high side get a line? Or is Kendall Ball going to rocket his way into the history books here as he had a breakthrough win last night in the Xfinity Series and looks to go back-to-back -back at Daytona with a Truck Series win here tonight as they go into the turns three and four complex. Here we go. White flag this time by. Down the front straight away through the short chute. It's a four-truck breakaway out front. Oh, Nelly. Four trucks are tight, bike back together. White flag in the air. Oh, it just is. We took the white. We took the white flag. We are racing back as someone just got yeeted and set into the outside retaining wall. Violent impact at the back of the field, but we stay under green flag conditions. Kendall Paul continues, but here comes a peel off. They're trying to go to the outside. It's going to be a two truck oh, tandem. Paul Kendall Paul goes up the block. Oh, oh, watch blocking. Oh, what a block by Paul. Can it be? Can it be? Can it be two nights in a row? Man, here we go out of turn four, buddy. Coming out of four, Kendall Paul is saying, if I can do it once, I can do it twice, and I will block this, and I will block that, and I'm going to drive this thing right into victory Kendall lane. Kendall Paul. Right in a row. That's two Kendall in a row. Paul. That's a two for baby. Holy. And wow. Are you kidding me, bro? Two in a row. <laughs> he just got dumped. <laughs> two for two. He was O for how many, Matt? A year. And this man, in two days, he's now your two-time winner. What a job. Matt, I'm telling you, we weren't, we weren't fluffing. I mean, we speak from experience. We said, absolutely, it could be done. Is it is it is it a long shot? Yes, but it has been done. And Kendall Paul is on a roll right now. As he uh, put uh, at uh, 78 uh, in victory lane once again. Swamp King, I wish I could be, I, I had a way to pop you in. I would let you do let you do the booze, sir. We go boo. We got Swamp King booing. I'll do it for Swamp King. We'll do it during the interview for Swamp King. There we go. We got to take care of him. Yeah. All right. Let's get ready to talk to for the second night in a row. Oh, I can't believe it. Two nights in a row, Kendall Paul. Oh, Kendall is getting some shade in the chat, boys. Oh, man. Well, let's find him here if I can find Interstellar front of his truck looks like a meat puppet uh, and yet Kendall Paul you got a copy on me I got you man <laughs> uh, all right before I start the official interview I guys I gotta do something for one of our viewers okay because they're requesting oh. it in chat Swamp King in chat says boo I say good job <laughs> I, 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 I did not mean to do that. I was, I felt so bad. I was trying to give him the big push, and he came onto my back, my front bumper, way too quick than I thought. Holy man, the mackerel! What about that? Two nights in a row. Two in a row, man. You got that monkey off your back last night. Two nights in a row, you go to victory lane. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I mean, <laughs> I thought we were clear in the back of the field all night. I didn't think we were going to have a shot at it, but oh my gosh, we did it again. I'm not kidding you. Go back and watch this broadcast about halfway through the race. You know, we were talking about you going all the last year winless, and then last night you break through and punch your ticket, get that W. Matt asked me, can Paul win again tonight? And I said very confidently, absolutely. You get that monkey off your back, all that synergy, all that energy comes into this race tonight, and I said he absolutely could get it done. And lo and behold, two for two here at Daytona. I mean, you have to be vibe and live in the dream right now oh my gosh it's it's so real still like oh my gosh like we just we went a slump here last year we had a martin truex year didn't win at all 
And to bring this Rogue Energy truck now to victory lane, bring Interstellar to take the sweep on the whole week, like, it's it's amazing. It's really special for all the team. Again, shout out to the whole team. Uh, unfortunately, James couldn't make it because he's the lucky duck that gets to go to the Daytona for real. Um, but thanks to John, Mike, Charles that came out tonight. Unfortunately, Corey couldn't come out tonight. Unfortunately, George couldn't come out tonight. Uh, if I'm forgetting anybody else over at Interstellar, oh my gosh, we, <laughs> we did it again. That was for you guys, Interstellar boys. Man, what a night. And, man, again, Kendall, great job here tonight, buddy. And there's only one thing I want to say to you. As one of our commenters said earlier tonight, I know someone else in this room right now that is happier than a tornado in a trailer park, <laughs> and that is Kendall Paul. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, I mean, <laughs> who, who wins they try to back-to-back? I, 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 I can't, still can't believe it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yes. The elites do, and uh, clearly you've proven that you're one to watch here early. You asserted yourself. You're a front runner. You have that cushion now. You got a playoff ticket punched. I mean, Daytona, hey, you couldn't have asked for a better outcome. I know I'm happy for you. Matt's happy for you. YouTube Nation cheering you on in the chat all <laughs> night right as well. And as Matt said, one of those guys is happier than a trailer <laughs> park for you. Oh yeah, for sure. And um, thanks to everybody for watching out tonight. That's it was a pretty good race throughout the whole race. And uh, I guess I'll go back and thank the sponsors again: uh, Archway Industrials Coating, Rogue Energy, uh, Track Racer, Adam and Box, um, Black Magic Studios, and I mean, shout out to Mark Murphy for that push. And back here again. <laughs> Well, there you go, man. Well, again, congratulations, buddy. We will let you go, my man. Congrats. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> hey, congratulations. And, Matt, that's why we say it's never over until it's over at Daytona. Well, we will move on to P2 here tonight. Samuel Cook. I, and Samuel, let's get his opinion on all of this. And right here in a moment. And we'll be right back. Yes, sir. Okay. The ten four on my way. All right, Samuel Cook. What a night. At the moment. Where is Samuel? I cannot find him in check. Unfortunately, guys, second and third not here right now. But what a night it was here tonight. What a night here this evening as we get ready to go off the air. Thank you, everyone, for coming out here. What a night here. Kendall Paul picks it up in this race here. Congratulations here tonight. If he wins another race, he's got to drop a camp in. Yes, sir. Good for Kendall. Thank you, everyone, for coming out here tonight. Over 469 views. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, everybody. And we will talk to you guys next time here tonight. <laughs>